You can be a cigar smoker and walk into anywhere and you see another cigar smoker, you automatically instant relate kinship. to that person. Instant friendship. Yeah, yeah. Just going market. back real quick to the World Cup, Joe, I got I to gotta ask you this. I mean, yeah. you know, let's say Ecuador and Italy were in the World uh, Cup. I got to oh. go Italia, Italia. <laughs> There's always newcomers smoking cigars and they walk into a humidor and they just kind of overwhelmed. It comes a lot, whoever's in that lounge or cigar shop, to, to guide people. We have to go down 486 fucking steps. Going down was no problem. Going up was a pain in the ass, you know? I said that last day, I was so tired. My uncle was looking at me. He was laughing. I was laughing at him. He goes, you know what? Fuck it. Today, let's take the elevator. The oh son of a bitch God. had an elevator wow. over there. They go right to his, to his house. When you come out with your own cigar, it's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because, all right, now I have my own cigar. Like, this is, this is yeah. awesome. This is something that I've dreamed of. You can see. You can touch it. And it's beautiful. But do I have to smoke? But now it? all you do is smoke <laughs> your cigar. Like, yeah, I, that's I, it. I do it all the time. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Burndown Podcast. I'm Justin. That's Eric. We are joined here today at the beautiful General Club here at Eisenhower Park. We are joined with Joe Bonanno and Jason Messina of San Giuseppe's Cigars, along with Big Joe Gambino, a return guest. Had yes, him on the sir. podcast before. You know him as Big Joe Gambino on Instagram. Okay. And um, they're actually working together on their own cigar, which is why we have all three of them together here. Uh, we want to thank you guys for coming on the show. Uh, we appreciate you setting us up at the General Club. This is a wonderful, wonderful place. Um, and we are actually smoking San Giuseppe cigars. Uh, this looks like they're Castellamare. Castellamare. Yeah, Castellamare. Okay. I, my, my Italian's not Justin went to Italy once and, you know. I'd say I went to Italy once. Italian. I'm Italian. Okay. That's it. <laughs> What's going on, gents? Thank, so, thank you guys for coming right, on. Guys, thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. Yeah. Big Joe, welcome thank back, my friend. It's you, always good to guys. see you. Thank you. You guys are looking dapper as ever. Thank you. Now, uh, tell us about. One, San Giuseppe Cigars, but also how you guys are working with Big Joe. Because Big Joe told us back in December, I'm getting my own cigar. You guys got to try it. Well, now we're here in the flesh. Yeah. So what's the story behind that? We started the company. I started this company about, what, two and a half years ago? Yeah, um, oh. pretty much three years yeah, ago. Yeah, about three years ago, I, I made the trip down to the DR. I had a very dear friend introduced me to one of the big rigs down in Santiago. Not going to mention any names, but anyway, <laughs> went down there and he gave me pretty much the blessing to start a company. And um, and that was always my passion. I've been into cigars since I've been a kid. My father got me into cigars. My father's still he's 84 years old. He smokes two a day. He's a big San Giuseppe fan. He only smokes these now. I hope so. He smokes two a day? Two a day. 84. Still, great, still to this day. Great shape. Yeah, he's... he's for all he, those people out there that think cigars are bad for your health. 84. My father's been smoking <laughs> cigars since I was, I remember being in his Cadillac at a kid, maybe nine, ten years old, his big El Dorado, and I'm in the back seat with my friend, my friend Anthony Battaglia, a good friend of mine. We're little kids, and he's got the big cigar in his mouth, and he rolled down the window this much with <laughs> choking in the back seat, but that's how I started, you know, like, and seeing my father smoking cigars. Obviously, I was choking as a little kid on it. They didn't like it at that time, but... um. Then I see. I see that help with your growth. Yeah, it does actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For people that are listening and not watching, you know, they actually Joe was a big boy. We got yeah. Big Joe, but we also got Bigger Joe here. Yeah, Joe's big. They, they, they actually <laughs> say that uh, tobacco it, uh, it actually increases your testosterone. It does. It does. Some scientists it does. facts. Yeah, I heard out there. So I don't know how true it is, but which is yeah. why we got a bunch of men here at the table. That's right. Okay. Real men smoke well, we cigars. We got some right? men here. Real men smoke cigars. So they say. So. Yeah. From that point on, I got, um, you know, I was always inspired by the cigar. And I was a smoker of cigarettes for many years at a young age. I started as a teenager. It was a big thing. You know, back in the 90s, everybody smoked cigarettes. So did cigar did cigars help you get off of cigarettes? No. What happened was I just didn't want to smoke cigarettes anymore. I felt like shit because inhaling that cigarette and all those byproducts into your Hell lung yeah. for years. Smoked for like 15, 17 years. I decided one day I took that Chantec stuff and I stopped. Chantix. And uh, and I started took up cigars, and from that point, how was on, that first cigar they had? Did you inhale great. it? No, I didn't. You, oh, you didn't? Okay, I didn't. But when I was a cigarette smoker, I remember going to a wedding years ago over here in New York, and I remember buying cigars because all my friends we were all suits on, were smoking cigars. And I remember taking a drag, and I pulled it because I'm a cigarette smoker. <laughs> 
and I got fucking sick. Oh, you get sick as a really dog. nauseous. I remember sweating, but you know, natural tobacco. It's it's all nicotine. And from that point on, um, anyway, going back to the San Giuseppe story, um, went down to the DR, got the blessing, came back home. I said, you know what? I'm going to start my own cigar brand. I'm in the construction business, so it was like my second thing it was kind of like a. The side thing. I said, let me it's try like a to, hobby. You took, like yeah, a hobby. Yeah, I said, yeah. But I had, I saw the opportunity. I saw the big opportunity. And while I was doing this, my driver, my the guy that drives me my right hand down in the DR, which is works for me now. He's one of my closest, my, my friend. His name is Willie Reyes, which is Jose Reyes from the Mets. That's his first cousin. Wow. So I'm down there establishing this business, getting all my attorneys and everything and all my paperwork. I'm actually going down every two weeks because there's a lot of work to do. It's not just, hey, I'm opening up a cigar company. Went down there. Willie says to me, um, he says, he gets me on a, a, a FaceTime. And I'm FaceTiming Jose Reyes. I'm like, wait, you're Jose Reyes from the Mets. And I, it all clicked. Long story short, Jose said, yeah, next time you come down, come down to my hacienda. And, you know, I want to meet you. And, you know, we'll say hello. Went down. By this time, I'm already in the motions of getting the business started. And Jose, I said, hey, I was at his hacienda and I knew Jose was a big cigar. I said, Jose, you know, starting a company, what would you think if I made a label under your name? I started your own. He goes, shit, go for it. And that was it. Went back to the factory. We started developing, doing a little R&D. We developed the home plate box, which we have patent the home, the home plate box? We have a yeah. home plate Jose Reyes so box. Wait, which it, like, it's in the shape of a home plate? Yeah. yeah. Or actually... I think I brought one. Do you have one? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Oh, yeah, we got to show that. Let's check it out. Yeah, well, that's how it started. The home plate. So I figured, listen, if just being a boutique cigar company, like, you know, you're a, I'm a little fish in a big pond, right? Yeah. No so, shit. Yeah. And you, did, you work with uh, Larry Look Walker, this. too, right? Well, yeah, that, that's all came after. Yeah. So Jose was our first. We launched this party two years ago this August. Well, just coming August, about a year and a half ago. And cool, uh, huh? Dude, Jose this, loved this the idea. Sweet. I specifically sweet. blended the cigar to him. I gave it to him. I said, oh, I loved it. I said, Jose, yeah, try it. He fell in love with the blend. Then we started going back, and that's how Jason came in. So now I'm, I got I got legs on this company. I said, wait, I got to bring some partners in. Because I'm, I'm not a big internet guy. You know, like, and I had a big, I have a big construction company. I'm running a business. I, I don't have the time. I need somebody that knows what they're doing. So me and Jason got friendly. He came in. He started designing. Actually, I gave him all the artwork for the San Giuseppe label, and he was putting it all together. He was doing all the stuff, and then we just kind of merged. We got close, and I said, Jason, come on board. Made him a partner, and then from there was history. Jose Reyes, we launched him. Then we got, was it Fergie yeah. Jenkins? Yeah, we got Fergie Jenkins, old school pitcher from the Cubs. Mm -hmm. I heard he was all a big famer. cigar smoker. So yeah. we sent him a box, and his agent immediately called us and said, we've always wanted to do a cigar for Fergie. Let's try something out. So we did a, a limited release, 100 boxes. They sold in one night, mm -hmm. one, one day. One night. We walk up in the morning. I looked at my, I was like, whoa, sold shit. <laughs> I called Jason. Is, Jason is, this, is this correct? Could this they're, loyal. they're very loyal. And the funny thing about it is that half of the people don't even smoke cigars. What we did is we kind of merged the collectability along with cigars. Yeah. Sure. And as we were talking to some of the people, they're like, no, we didn't open the we don't want to well, cigar it. cigar people are known to be very like hoarders and collectibles. They collect There's, lighters, yeah, boxes, yeah, cigars. Yeah. So you throw a baseball in there. You but know, with the box, the box is special. That's thing about the home plate now that we got it patent. We're patented on that box. You got it. It's is there a, Do you have any like extras of this that we could take? Because we have in our studio a wall. He's seen Let's it. Give him one. Take that one. Let's take that Can one. Take yeah, that yeah, one? Of course. Yeah, we got a wall in the studio. We need your John Hancock on it though. All three. Yeah, of course. Yeah, sign this for sure. We gotta find out. Well, actually, Jose's not here. He's on actually on a Telemundo. It's called Casa de Famosa. Okay. Right now he's in Mexico City. He's been there for like I don't know how many two months now. He's doing really good. He's getting voted on. So. Oh, go, go, Jose. I hope he makes Yeah, we got to put this up on the studio. Yeah, we'll on, get on, you on, a sign one by Jose. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah, we we'll on the wall, one. we got all the Absolutely. boxes. Like, we just like to just throw them up on the wall. And then sometimes, like, the, the you got, we get the wall behind us that has, you know, we'll have some pictures. I think we have a picture that we were going to frame of, of us when we were on and put the, we like to put them all up on the studio. Yeah. yeah. Very, and it's just like very, cover very, every square inch of the studio. But yeah, it was, it was really, this is very cool. Man. And that led off into all the other plays. We got Fergie. Then, we got hooked up with John Daly. Yeah. We, we flew down. We actually made his prototype, and I said to the guy, I said, no, no, we're going down to bring it to him personally. Me well, and yeah, it's kind of a funny story how it happened, <laughs> yeah. because once we did all the design work and everything, uh, they they loved the idea. They loved all the design. They said, 
Send it down to us. Send it we'll down it and we'll look John. it over. Yeah. And Joe to, goes to, to Daly. To John to Daly. Daly. And yeah. Joe goes. No, no, no we're handling it. No, 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 we're going down John there. Daly. And the Got sec- it. Yeah. And the second we rolled up, John Daly went, oh, look at this big boy. <laughs> he's, then, okay. So, so, so is he, is, is he, he looks like he's like one of the most Salt fun guys. Oh, he Greatest looks like guy. a fucking animal. We Just became very friendly with him, but he is one of the nicest guys you're ever going to meet. And that's, that's what I've heard that. I heard he can like party like the rest of them. He can yeah, take back. Even, he can knock back Jack and Coke. She'll drink twenty beers. I don't know how he does. Table, I can't even. Come and then close still to. go out and shoot sixty-seven on a golf course. He's like, the only guy that could drink whiskey, smoke cigarettes, go out and beat Tiger Woods by six strokes. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anybody <laughs> could do that. But guys, John absolute, Daly can do it. That's it's fun. So we actually, it, it's. Uh, I've heard that from from other golfers, from many of these other famous golfers, that they said that John Daly could have been the greatest golfer ever. He just was like, didn't really give a fuck. He was like, whatever. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pound back some beers, go out and shoot whatever I shoot. If well, I shoot he well, did very or, good. He won the Masters. But yeah, I mean, no. He granted, he's a, he was very, very good golfer. Okay, John Daly. I'm not saying he's not a good golfer. I know what you're saying. I'm if just saying, like, him, he, you know, he was like, eh. I think he just likes doing it because he never practiced. Yeah. he loves to right. play golf. He's he never a, practiced. He's, nat- he's a no. naturally talented guy. He was also yeah. a kicker. Yeah, for football kicking, he was a great kicker, punter. Like, you ever see him? There's a video of him. On a course somewhere, and he's like short of the green or whatever, and he's got a fucking cigarette in his mouth. He's got a drink in his hand, and he's like, "Yeah, fuck it." He hits it one handed, chips it oh, one handed from right like in, thirty right. yards out, rolls right into the hole, I one handed, that. and he's like, that. "All right, <laughs> like, it was no big deal." Yeah, I think amazing. he was barefoot too because he was probably drunk, took his shoes off. Like John is just the salt of the earth. He's guy. just one of those Great guys. Guy. He got very friendly with him. Place, dude, right from the yeah, first the day. Good, yeah. We met him, and I actually I was there's a picture that's circulating around the internet. I was sitting across from John at our first lunch meeting that we had with him. And I lit up. I said, John, I said, you smoke cigars? And he goes, yeah, you know, but he's a cigarette smoker. I said, yeah. try one of these. I lit one from him. I put it in his mouth. I went like this with him. So I'm, I'm watching him now. You know, I just yeah, met yeah, the guy. Yeah. We're with his whole team and his girlfriend Anna was there and all of us were having lunch. We're in Toppin Springs, Florida. We're hanging out. We're having a good time. And I, uh, I looked at him and I said, John, how do you like that cigar? He goes, I go, you like cigars? He goes, I'm a fucking cigar smoker now. <laughs> and yeah. I snapped a picture of him, which is love it. one of the famous pictures. He's got his glasses on. He's got the cigar in his hand with the beard. It's, it's a classic picture. And from that on, I just kind of kind of took off. Then it went from John Daly, and then Fergie Jenkins invited Jason and I and and and, and, uh, all, and our crew. We went, went down to uh, Cooperstown. Nice. And we were spent we spent the weekend with all of the uh, the Hall of Famers and all the guys with it, Derek Jeter and all, all the Hall of Famers, Joe Torre, Johnny Bench. Anyway, long story short, I got a little friendly. I, we started developing the Larry Walker cigar. Larry was down there, and I made his blend before we got down there. He liked it. He's a big cigar smoker. And then I met I met Wade Boggs when we were down there, and his wife Debbie. They're having everybody's having a good time. Everybody's just doing their thing. And I pitched it to Wade. I said, wait, what if I make a cigar? He was totally on. He's like, I would love you to make a cigar in the minute. And that also fell into our lap. So we're developing that now. He actually, Wade Boggs invited uh, my fiance and I down to his house for a holiday party. We went there. We pitched. We showed we had the prototype cigar back in front of his whole family. And took That's pictures. Great. It was really great. So it's amazing was, how cigars just It just, just rolled just in. Keeps. It's a daisy chain. Yeah. For us. And but, a lot more people than... Smoke cigars like a lot more than you think. Oh, okay. Smoke cigars. Like we had interviewed um, a couple of athletes, and they were in the NFL, and they were saying that we asked you know, how many guys <clears throat> in the NFL smoke cigars. They go everybody. everybody. They yeah. go all yeah, smoke. Curry, like, right? they all, uh, yeah. like yeah. eighty percent of the yeah. athletes smoke cigars. He goes, there's a lot, and a lot of these, you know, there's famous actors and actresses. Well, if you think of, if you think about it, when you're done playing sports, you don't want to go out and get in trouble. So what's something that you can relax with the guys? Not even that. Yeah, I mean, what's, what's, what's relaxing. The, what's that the too. first thing they hand out when you win the fucking Super Bowl or you cigars win the, the NBA championship? Right. Then they hand out cigars. Last year, when the uh, Warriors, Steph Curry had yeah. a cigar in his mouth yep. within 30 seconds Absolutely. on television, yep. and Absolutely. he was on the cover of Cigar of yeah. Cigar all of them last month. But one thing all about cigars, too, as you guys all know, we're all cigar smokers here. You can be a cigar smoker and walk into anywhere and you see another cigar smoker, you automatically instant relate kinship. to that person. Instant friendship. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a camaraderie that we all have and we have a common like, you know, you might, the vanilla chalk and the strawberry, right? Everybody likes something different. You might like a Maduro, like a Habano, you might like a Connecticut. We all like, but it's all the same. We all like the same thing. We'll have a good scotch or a yeah. drink or whatever you're... 
drink preferences. It could oh, be yeah. whiskey, it could be scotch, it could be tequila, like Arnold Schwarzenegger loves tequila and a cigar. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it may be, it is all the same. We all relate to it. We're all men. And I think I just think that oh, women too. I mean, it's a, there's a lot of women. Yeah. That's, that's actually a good point because in the in the last I would say you know five years or so, there's a lot of women coming up because you know in the in history it's predominantly a male uh, oriented yes. sure. a, a, a practice. Or, Winston or, or, Churchill or, or, with the cigar. Yeah, a male oriented uh, um, with the cigar um, in his mouth, right? Whatever. Occasionally, like the, you men smoke cigars. But in the last five, maybe ten years, there's a lot of women that are coming, and there's nothing that, like it's not the, the cigars are not only for men. Obviously, cigars wow. are for everybody. Right. But in history, it was you know usually <clears throat> men would smoke cigars, women right. didn't. But now a lot of women are coming in. You see a lot of the events, and men love it too. Because let's be honest, when you go to an event, you don't want to be just you don't want it to be a sausage party. You want women there. You want to have a, you know Absolutely. you want a, everybody Absolutely. to yeah. to mingle and stuff and and. Then your like my wife smokes cigars. She loves cigars, and I got her into it. And she starts smoking. So now her and I we're in the backyard. We're both smoking a cigar. Nice. We go to events. You know, That's nice. you have all these people smoking cigars, and then it, it's just bringing more and more people together right. over cigars. And don't forget, yeah. obviously, this is a hundred percent natural. That's it. Nothing but. That's Sunshine, it. water, and earth make this tobacco. That's and it. fermented for three to five years, depending on where you're That's serving. it. And it goes in your mouth. So it takes about three three years before this stick goes from the ground to your mouth. Mm-hmm. Right? You can't say that for a cigarette. Obviously, cigarettes like oh, maybe I don't even get it started, I, man. I don't, don't hold me to it, but I think started. it's maybe twenty percent, maybe fifteen percent tobacco, and the rest I think is it's all even by, less than that. Probably byproducts is all fillers and it's just not good. I mean, obviously. Cigars, again, the testimony. I mean, George Burns, you lived to 100, what, 103 years old? Yeah, Smoked sir. You know what he said? Yeah, 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 he said I yeah, saw that. You know what he said? He goes, um, uh, he was, I forgot what show he was on. Was he on Johnny Carson? Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, yeah, you heard this, right? When he goes, yeah, yeah, Johnny yeah. Carson, what did your doctor say about smoking cigars? He goes, my doctor's dead. Because if I listen yeah. to my, if I listen, but, if I listen to what my doctor, my doctor said, sure. I wouldn't have lived to see his funeral. That's yep. what he said. Yeah. Right? yeah. So we so we got so Big Joe across the table. We got another big previous Joe. BDP guest. By the way, yes. by the by the way, by the way, rocking a sick watch. I oh, thank say. you. Look at that yeah, beautiful. It goes well with the outfits. It's I love. It's a nice timepiece right there. <laughs> I'm Sweet, gonna go out. Sweetest guy in the world. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you like gold, my friend. A little bit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Bit. Yeah, I don't know. We Gold's all, we thing, all like know? the gold. Oh, so we we had Joe on the podcast and he was telling us that he was coming out with his own cigar. Especially with San Giuseppe cigars. So, how did you guys link up? How did you guys connect? How was how was this this relation oh, formed? Yeah, yeah, Joe, yeah. Tell the story. I, I met Joe through uh, I met Joe at a cigar party. Okay. Actually, I, I snuck in. You know, I, I didn't I didn't pay. I walked in. I said, oh, "Give it a shot." And uh, he was a gentleman. He gave me a seat. You know, I, I met Jose Reyes. I, I was with a. Another guy with me, uh, his name was Tony Slice. We went in there. Tony Slice? Tony Slice. Tony Slice. Uh, sure, yeah, yeah. I used to work with him. We we, we said, let's go to the cigar party, you know? Let's see what happens. Up at Vetro. At Vetro. Yes, Vetro. Yes, great place. How great, 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 great cigar, talk. great food. Nice spot. And I said, this is an atmosphere that, you know, I'm into. I like it. And Joe <laughs> was a gentleman. Jason's a gentleman. Well, I know Jason for many years now, even before Joe, you know, through family, friends and stuff. So, uh, but two gentlemen. Gave me the cigars on the house, sit, sit, sat me down on the house, you know, treated me like a like a like a gentleman. So uh, ever since then, when we've been friends. How long ago was that? You, you probably sitting you're like, I don't like this. You did I like an interview guys. that night with Jose, <laughs> yeah. and we also did an interview with Jose yeah. Reyes that night. Mm-hmm. We wanted to interview Jose Reyes, and uh, I, 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 off the bat, I told him I apologize that I'm not a Mets fan. I'm a Yankee fan. You know, <laughs> I, I had to throw that I out there. But I don't well, think you should have told me. I don't think he gave a shit. You should have said, listen. I'm a Yankee fan, but if the Yankees are out of the playoffs and the Mets are in, not that that would happen very often, but if it is, I'll roll for the you Mets. You know what? You're a baseball fan. Let's <laughs> be real. It's a baseball fan. I would say I'm a New York fan. I'm a New York, York, fan. I'm a New York fan, okay? I rooted yeah. for the Buffalo Bills. 100%. Okay, okay? Yeah, listen, yeah. I'm a New York fan. New York, exactly. I'm not all the way. If it's a New York team against any other team, I mean, the Buffalo Mets, is the only the, really New York team. You know, I'm going to root for them. Yeah. Listen, uh, if the Giants, Jets, or Buffalo in, you had to root for them. We're, I'm we're, for them. we're native New Yorkers. Uh, we're born and raised yeah. here, so obviously. And, and if none of them own. are in, I'll root for the Texas team because, you know, happy wife, happy life. That's why. That's true. That's right. <laughs> You're right. Your wife's from Texas. so wife is from Texas, so I got to root for the Texas team. I can't say the same. My wife's from Ecuador. There's no football teams over there. You root for, well, in soccer, okay? Yeah, the World so. Cup comes around. I well, have, to her, that's football Americano. I know nothing about it. Yeah, Actually, but. yeah, they got it right because technically, 
that is football. What it we is. call football is not makes football. Sense. Yeah, it makes more sense. You're kicking yes. the ball with that, the foot. Yeah, that makes football. more sense, football. 100%. And by the way, the field that you've seen being built, you're yeah. wondering what that is? Yeah, what is that? It's cricket. Oh, I are wow. putting wow. together a cricket. Dude, so I actually heard, that's funny you bring up cricket. I heard that cricket is one of like the biggest sports Next to soccer, yeah. one of the biggest sports in England, like, on, right? it started in on the planet. I mean, you don't see it over here in mm-hmm. the United States, but anywhere over there British. on the other side of the pond, yeah. especially over in India, like the Middle East. Yeah. yeah. That is huge. There's a big tournament. All the seats are sold already for the there's one big event coming up. It's yep. like a derivative of the baseball, right? I mean, they yeah, pitch I don't it. understand There's it a at paddle all. about. <laughs> There's a bowler and then there's no gloves. I don't know. I, don't know. Well, I mean, I bet you, know, you play cricket. I don't even. I don't even know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I, a, I know. I know too many cricket. But, uh, <laughs> no, I know. I, I, I had a couple of cricket know. traps not, in my basement. I was catching yeah, cricket. Maybe, just going back cricket. real quick to the World Cup, Joe. I got. I got to ask you this. I mean, yeah. you know, let's say Ecuador and Italy were in the World Cup. I got Italia. Italia. Oh, I don't know about it. Let's put the house apart. I'm with you. I'm going to say it again. If Ecuador and Italy were in the World Cup, who are you rooting for? I have my Italian shirt on all day. <laughs> she could be on one side of the room. I'll we got Ecuador side. from across the room over there. Yeah. I <laughs> I'll bet. The, I'll bet the favorite. Root Wait, for the Columbia other. Too. Half Colombia. So oh, it could yeah, be yeah. Colombia either. But I'm wearing my Italian shirt. Okay. So, so speaking of World Cup, though, World Cup's going to be here in uh, mm-hmm. in yes uh, at MetLife. Met Met, yeah, yeah. Met. Hey, was it really? Awesome. Yeah, dude. Oh, 20, uh, 2026. Oh, I had no idea. I think oh, it's going to be MetLife Stadium. It's going to bring a lot you of know how uh, fucking crazy. Sure. You know what? My so we were talking about is. Uh, my wife and I might when that comes in for however long that is if it's we might say fuck it we're going to go on vacation rent out the house oh, you yeah. know how much money yeah. you get for your house well you'll get people from all over the world Yeah. well right. you get like the guys that you might have to vet the people that come you know, no but I'm saying like you get these guys yeah. Yeah. no but, but you especially get especially in New York with the squatter rules if you get like the, the coaches or like some of these big wigs that come in like a Ronaldo or a, or, or a Messi that are coming yeah, in and they don't want to stay in a hotel they want a house okay but if you get some of these guys, you can rent. You can make thirty, forty, fifty grand on your house because these guys will pay for whatever. They don't want to take a thirty thousand dollars security deposit. That's yeah, exactly. Sure that's that what I would say. Yeah, in case they trash the house, I'd write. I'd, I'd have a lengthy mm. fucking contract and write the whole easily, thing. Easily, easily. You kidding me? And I'd be like, peace. I'm go. I'll go upstate. I'll spend a week in upstate. Why not? Smart. You kidding me? Well, well I don't know how that works out. Italian or Ecuador. What are you going to do with the podcast then? You know, you can't be away for too long. You're coming with me, man. For fifty fucking thousand dollars for a weekend, you're coming with me. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> That's make it a hundred grand, and I'm in. I don't do anything. I'm coming too. That's yeah. the easiest oh, fifty grand. Oh, 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 hey, I got property oh, upstairs. Ten grand each. Just five bucks. Oh, there. Yeah, there's right, a man. free ten thousand dollars. So do nothing. Cigar party. We whack it up. Have exactly. a cigar party. Now, where what do you guys think? I love it. Now, is this is so this far. your family crest? Where, That's where? my fear. So the, okay. what I did is I took... Great cigar, by the way. Dan. I That's will say, by the way, one thing that is very nice that has really nothing to do with the blend itself, the, the label comes off so nicely. So oh, when I that is such that a label, small yeah. little thing. It's a big yes. deal. But the fact that they come off clean like this and they're yeah. not ripped... Well, that's is. a French linen paper that I use. I don't and a know heavy why, stock. but it's very uh, satisfying. French it linen paper. French linen, yeah. We use it's it. very okay. satisfying. And, I, and when, I, when I did design that and I said, I want, listen, I always say, uh, there's a lot of car manufacturers out there, right? When I started this company, I said, I want to build Ferraris, not Fords. Nothing wrong with Fords, but I want to build Ferraris. And that was my motto from the very beginning. Quality is everything. If it passes my... You know, if it passes my standard and I can enjoy it, and then I give it to my friends and they enjoy it, I love feedback. Constructive mm-hmm. criticism, mm-hmm. constructive criticism is very important for me. Not, you know, you can't make everybody happy in this world, right? There's vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors for a reason. Exactly, and that's right? why you it's don't not come out. For, exactly, exactly. So for us, it's about what I like, but I also have to be. I also have to think about the masses too, right? Mm-hmm. It's not just what I like, but if I make something meeting that smokes good, that doesn't give you an aftertaste in your mouth, mm-hmm. that the tobacco ferments, it's fermented properly, and it's aged properly, properly, that's the most important thing. So again, I'm building Ferraris, not Fords. We, Nothing we wrong might, with Fords, but I rather go for. Before we got to this, how much is a lot? So in the beginning, it was all parties, right? Cigar parties, mm-hmm. and you'd give them out, and someone would say, "Well, just cracked a little bit." No problem. 
let's go back, let's fix it, you know, and that's basically what we had to do. Over well, it was your own R and D was the parties. Correct. Well, okay. the first two is like yeah. you were saying, you're making, you're making at Best Robins has thirty more flavors for a reason, right? Being a cigar uh, brand owner, cigar maker, you you. To probably smoke everything, right? Like we have our own cigar, we smoke everything. There's no, there's not one Correct. that's like partial. Where okay, I only smoke full body. We smoke everything. We enjoy cigars. We enjoy all different flavors of cigars. And you want to put stuff. You want to put first off. I'm not putting my name on something if I don't think it's a home run. Okay. Exactly. We first came out with a cigar. I'm not gonna put my name on it unless it's a fucking hundred out of a hundred, a plus plus. Because if I bring you a cigar and say, listen, this is like, you know, it's like a B plus cigar, and I made it. What do you think? You're, you're going to be like, well, you think it's a B plus and you made it. Then it can't be any good. But you were saying that there's a reason you come out with with different cigars because some other people may not be as into cigars as you are where you smoke everything across the board. They might smoke only mild or they might smoke only full body. So that's why you have different blends. Right. Well, that's right? where that's where I tweak the business. So as I started bringing on new um, sports celebrities, I made a blend for them. So instead of San Giuseppe, which obviously I can make the blend and name it all the my the main name is Castellamare. That's where my hometown is in Sicily. It's both sides of my family. Bonano Cosomano from Castellamare. So my family that's, that's crest. The, that's the town? Castellamare? Castellamare is a part of Sicily. It's in northern Sicily. Yeah. It's a very, it's Are called, you from Sicily too? Yes, but not that part. Yeah. Or Sicile, as they would say, right? Well, Sicilia. It's, it's it's well you're you're by the water. Yes, Castellamare is north, uh, I would say, west of the of the island of Sicily. Right. It's actually a, a vacation spot for Sicilians and, and Italians. Yeah, it's they go there. It's called, Castellamare means castle on the water. Yeah. Is, yeah. It, uh, is yeah. it by the steps where you had to go up and down? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's Positano. That's uh, Positano. The, the, the Malfi Coast, the 486 that's steps. But that's, <laughs> that's beautiful, <laughs> too. Yeah, you lose about three pounds walking up those things, right? You ever, have you heard that story? 30 pounds, 40 pounds. <laughs> have, you, have, have, you, have you heard that story right? that he had it when he was You've a kid? He went down. I didn't hear this. I didn't story. hear it. I want to hear it. Oh, you got to repeat the story. Oh, of course. Of course. Oh, I'm in Italy. Turn, turn a little bit. I'm in Italy. We go to Positano for two weeks, and my uncle lives in Positano in the mountains, right? To get to the fucking beach, we have to go down 486 fucking steps. Going down was no problem. Going up was a pain in the ass, you know? I was, the, the last day, I was so tired. I said, I can't stand these steps. My uncle was looking at me. He was laughing. I said, what's he laughing at? Right? He goes to me, you know, I'm feeling kind of tired myself because my knees hurt. You know, I really don't want to go up these stairs. And I'm looking at him. What does he mean by that? Right? He goes, you know what? Fuck it. Today, let's take the elevator. The oh son of a bitch God. had an elevator wow. over there. They go right to his, to his house. I think he wanted to see you suffer. He did. That's he did. And he laughed yeah, the whole 100%. way. I had son of a bitch. Wow. But, uh, got a good work. But it was a good, was a good workout. workout for two weeks. Uh, got a good leg workout. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, Unbelievable. But it was worth it. Positano, it was, Positano was, was absolutely. You've been there, right? I've been there. My wife and I went to Italy for, for two weeks for our honeymoon. Went nice. all no, Started in the north in Lake Como, which was beautiful. Just, But it's... It, it, it's beautiful. It's one because everybody said like, "Oh, you, you got to go here. You got to get that." I'm like, listen, Italy. It's you can't see everything in two weeks. Okay, yeah, it's just no, like any other country. You can't. Way. You got to go back. So we're gonna try. So, but northern Italy, central Italy, southern Italy, three completely different Italy's. Right. We had the North Mountains, the regions, beautiful. Right. Went to Tuscany. Went to Rome. Uh, we were in Florence. We went down the Malfi Coast. Like we saw it all. And uh, he was telling me Malfi that that story in Positano. It's like we we stayed just outside of Positano in um, Praiano, which was okay, yeah. right between Positano and um, there's the other further north up the coast. I always forget the name of it. Um, we stayed there and we were going to Positano. He was telling me the story. I was like, oh fuck, I can't imagine those because yeah. I didn't like the steps. I was like, yeah. I, this is this is and it's hot there too. And yeah. it, fortunately yeah. for us, we went in May. It wasn't that hot. Kind of got yeah. It was weird because seventies maybe. Well, what sucked is we wanted to go to Capri, which we had a, a boat reserve. We were going to go all around Capri, but what happened was it just downpoured on us. And it was so strange because all the Italian, the locals were saying, this is so odd. Wow. Like, this doesn't usually happen at this time of year. Hmm. So it gives us a reason to go back. Uh, but I, I love Italy. I always, I tell him, I go, you got to go to Italy, too. I think Justin talks about Italy maybe like every, I, other, every other podcast. I'm I like, tell you, we would, I was there. We I was there, you love Italy. I was there for one day. <laughs> and I look at my wife and say, can we just move here? Let's just fucking wow. fuck it. Let's just move here. Let's bring the dog. Let's bring the it's a movie. That. People go there. They don't want to come back. It. Yeah. I didn't want to come back. Yeah. We were there for two weeks and we saw everything. And it was, 
I mean, we did the works and the wine, the food, food the, yeah. the, oh, the yeah. scenery. The, it was. I didn't want to leave. I was just, I, I was just at a restaurant on Second Avenue called San Mateo. I don't know if you guys have ever been there, but That's uh, it, it's. Uh, I was with the guy who's who's owned it, whose cousin owned it, and uh, he has a few spots both on Second Avenue. I think it's one on 89th Street and one's on 91st Street. But all the food was straight from the Amalfi Coast, and you know when you eat food in New York, you know if you had chicken colors from here and you had mashed, you're stuffed to the brim. I, we ate so much food. I don't know. It was so light, and it was just. We had so we had the fried it's organic. Yes, yeah, so that's I what it was. It was all fresh you, from the from Italy, Italy, It was so good. Italy spoiled me for coming back to the United States. I came back to the United States and said, "Our food sucks." In the U.S., <laughs> yeah, they sucks. feed us the GMOs, the chemicals, the byproducts. Then you go to the doctor and get medication to counter that, and yep. it's like a vicious cycle. Mm. Yeah, like when you can business. just when I go to oh. the DR, the same thing. I'm in the DR every month. The so factory. Natural. When I eat there, it's a whole. I, I feel so good. I'll eat breakfast in the morning and I leave there. I'm like, I feel like I didn't even eat, but I feel good, satisfied. There's no everything is picked off the tree. We yeah. went it's all to organic. We, we went amazing. to this one lady's. We were in. Uh, we were staying at this villa in Tuscany. It was just a, a villa in the room. middle of the Tuscan Hills. I was smoking a cigar, looking at the sunset, coming over the hills. I'm right. like, this is. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm looking at the face of God right now. It was. It was That's unbelievable. Nice. That's nice. And we we take this car to this. So we had a, a, a cooking class scheduled, and we just pull into this lady. It's just this one woman, and she's like, she, her and her husband, and then her father own this farm, and we did a cooking class, and we we made a a, a pear and goat cheese like appetizer. Then we made homemade pasta with wild boar ragu, and then a, a tiramisu dessert. Every single ingredient. Came from her farm. Everything, of course, organic. Nice. The yeah. wheat that she made, right for the for the flour that we used, came from her farm. Of course. The eggs came from her farm. The wild boar she she shot and she killed. Like, them out and she the them cheese, and the cheese came from the goats. <laughs> the pears she grew. Everything was from her farm, and it was probably one of the best meals I've ever had in my life. When you say wild boars, how funny you said because I've I'm a big hunter and I've I probably I don't know in my in my years I probably shot about ten wild boar and I've had them butchered the best meat. Really, so and I'm good. not a big pork eater, but when it you do good. wild boar the right thing, you get it butchered. I had bacon made from it; it was exceptional. Where are you good. shooting wild boar? They're, they're preserves in, in the northeast Pennsylvania. Anyway, area. Backyard. I would go with my bow and arrow. <laughs> I've shot them with the bow, the rifle, but I always went for the meat, you yeah. know. And it's, it's fun because I'm a big hunter too. Yeah. So it's good meat. Took my son one time; he shot one, and we had a we got just a great time getting out there with my son and hunting and everything. Good bonding. We, we, it's we really did a good. wild game dinner and cigar event. Yeah, are you going, are you going on? Are and you it's going funny on because it's no. like the wild <laughs> game. Like if you're not used to it, it does have a different flavor, of but course. it's so good. I had so never tried good. it, believe it or not. So when we did the cigar dinner, yeah. it was a, a chef that was you know knows how to prepare it and everything. And I was like, I'll try it. You know. Unbelievable. As long, as, it's as long as it's not crawling off my We plate. had elk. Yeah. Well, elk is venison, but yeah, I, 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 I shot an elk in um, Montana two years ago. I had the meat process brought back. It was a big elk. It was 750 pounds. And we, I think I took home about 250 pounds of meat. You know, clean meat processed. You know, we still have it. I still got chopped meat. We made burgers. Awesome. Anyway, we took that. I had some deer that I, I harvested in Pennsylvania. We had wild boar there. We had a lot of it. And the chef made it. It was wild boar. Wild boar might be my favorite. It's crazy. It's crazy. And you know what's actually, it's not a big, it's not big game is, but rabbit. We've had rabbit. Gonigu. Gonigu. Rabbit. I Gonigu. love it. I had a, I was love working it. in a pizzeria as a kid and the guy uh, came in with rabbit, made rabbit stew. The best. My aunt used to make that. had that at the event. She made rabbit. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it, you're not shooting it. You're catching it, right? But no, but well, we yeah. shoot them. We shoot rabbits too. Like yeah, with a little slingshot, right? Like a nine-year-old in the Joe backyard. Joe shoots anything. <laughs> no, we if, if it moves, so. Right? Yeah, we, well, I'm not. I don't, I don't want to. I, when I, whatever I kill, I usually eat. Yeah. You know, I th I, I'm actually a firm believer in that. Like, I'm, yeah. I think that if you're going to hunt and go kill something. Absolutely. Eat it. You Or or use it. Don't. I'm not a. I don't. I don't like the guys that will go out and and like. Shoot something just to hang just them on his the wall. Sport. Like, yeah. yeah, if you're gonna, you know, use well, it. don't get me wrong. Being a hunter, we do shoot trophies. Like when I went for elk, the first five days, you know, you're there six days. You're hunting hard. You're up four o'clock in the morning. You're out in the mountains. You're hiking, and my whole goal is to get a trophy, which I just hung in my house in Pennsylvania, just past. What did you do? What did, What did you do with the the meat though? 
I took the meat back, the elk. I had that's a process, 220 pounds. But that's pounds. what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you didn't just shoot it no. hanging on your wall and say, I shot that. I'll be honest. On the you last day. You ate the body. I don't care if you hang it on the wall. On the like, last day, it. if it wasn't a trophy, I was going to shoot a cow elk just for the meat because I want to come home with some yeah. meat. Yeah. And but I also shot a mule there and I took the meal. Too. You and some other guys is that yeah. you're always eating the meat. It may be yeah, a trophy like, that you could put on your wall, but you're always utilizing the animal. I get, you're not just I get best kill- of both worlds. Yeah, know? you're not just killing the animal just to, for the sake of killing the animal. Like, I know some guys that'll go out to Africa and shoot some fucking elephant just to say they shot an elephant. I'm but like, they also feed the village with that. You but know that, right? I hope they, they do. do. I hope they, they do. Because we're going to probably do a safari, African safari. I hope so, because I'm like, some of these guys, they just, they'll shoot them just to shoot them. I don't, them. I don't hunt. feed the village no, with that meat. do something yeah. with it. Yeah. If you take you it or if you feed somebody with it, even if you like, you take the the, <clears throat> the, the fur and you make somebody a jacket that they're nice. Yeah, and correct. You do something with it. Yeah. That's that's being. Yeah, you don't just want to leave life. it in the woods or in yeah, the bush. Yeah, you know, do not, something with it. I like it's hunting with, with the camaraderie. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot. The part about hunting that I like, I don't I don't hunt. I don't actually, you know, go out with bows and guns, but I'll, I'll join my friends and my family. They go. I just like the camaraderie. I like hanging go out, out hang yeah, with all the guys, the guys hanging out in the in the, in the, in the tree house or in the, you know, in the in the in the what do you call it? Yeah, uh, the blind. Winding one up. Yeah. Big Joe, you uh, you ever hunting over there or what? Uh, years ago, I'm my uncle, but I would love to go with Joe one day. And actually, I, I told Joe I'm going to take go. him. But, you know, I, I have, you know, certain times a day I have to stop and have an espresso. We're going to be in the fucking woods in the mountains. Wait, wait, wait. Yo, get a little, okay. get a thermos. So, 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 okay, <laughs> speak, speaking of that, one thing that that I learned the hard way in in Italy. Oh, here we go. Back to Italy. Was no milk after morning. You can't have, like, you, I, I like the cappuccino. I love cappuccinos. Because of the milk. Spare for the you stomach. have a cappuccino in the mm. morning. If you ask for a cappuccino at dinner, after dinner, it's like a shame, blows. shame. Yeah, it's yeah. Like a big no, no. I was and like, they know you're a tourist. I was like, yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> Tell me you're like, a tourist. Oh, then, yeah. then he's like, Espresso. Yeah, you're a cappuccino. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I want a cappuccino. He's like, no, no, no. no. Espresso. I was like, all right, right, fuck me. Espresso. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, sure. It's got to be because of the milk, the lactate. It, it, it's bad if you're sleeping. Yeah. And another thing is, is, is there's no, like, you want to go to a coffee shop? You don't sit down and like. Mm-hmm. There is no. I'm yeah, gonna I order heard. coffee and sit down. Put two dollars. You order down, an espresso, you take a shot, you, shot, you, you get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not like you're like a Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, it's totally different. Yeah. So, so Big Joe, so tell us. Uh, I, I have to call you Big Joe and Joe. I have to differentiate. Now you right? have to do it. Oh, it's um, Big Joe B and G, Big okay. Joe G. Yeah, Joe get, right. Big, Big Joe Gambino. Yeah. I like that. So. You have a cigar. You're working with San Giuseppe's yes. to make your own cigar. I blend yes. the cigar. Yeah, yeah. Blend. So tell us about about how, this. It's, how does it feel to have your own cigar? Yeah, it feels amazing. Um, Joe, when he did it from scratch, like I was saying last time, he went to the DR, picked out the leaf, the blend, and it's it, it started from scratch. It's not like you know, oh, we're gonna pick this cigar, we're gonna just throw Joe's name on it. No, it started from scratch, and that's what I like about it. That's what. I'm excited about it because it's not it's not an old bullshit cigar. This is so from no, your from the, cigar, like blended Maduro. specifically for him, his persona. Yeah. And how many a, times did it t- like? Did you have a multiple iterations? Yeah, of it, it was probably about five blends before. Mm. Yeah. I, I I liked it. I came back. Mm. I me and Jason smoked it. Then I had him. And I Lucas had one. Smoke it, yeah. I had one actually over here. The first time I had it. It's a Gordo. It was very okay. Good. What's the size? Sixty gauge by so six and a half inches. Oh, so it's a nice cigar, cigar. and it's a Maduro. It's a Maduro. So it's, it's a like, it's like, a, like a Toro Gordo almost. Yeah, it's a little, it's a Gordo. Yeah, it's a that's big a cigar. fatty. Yeah, it's, it's a, a big fatty, one. but okay. it's a nice cigar. So it's an hour and you a half. You know what, 60, it's, it's funny because like when I first got into cigars, I didn't really, I was like, ah, 60, that's kind of big. That's kind of no, that's not, like, right? This is a 60, right? right? And, right then, and then you start you start kind of smoking more, and I, I I enjoy a good like 6 by 60 or 6 and a half by 60. That's the most popular size. I enjoy it. That's the one that like we come out with the next size up, it's going to be a 6 by 60. Six when you six, got a hand like a grizzly bear, well, like I me mean, and yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. you got to smoke a <laughs> big a, cigar. It looks like you have a little pencil in your hand, right? Yeah. But <laughs> it's also how it feels, too. It's all about feeling. It's also about flavor, the burn rate, right? The draw. Right. It's 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 more than just that. But it has to feel. It has to reflect on you, mm-hmm. right? A cigar. I yeah. feel. Don't get me wrong. I I'll, I'll go after the. I'll go upstairs after I'm waiting for my driver, and I'll smoke a robusto. Yeah, I have a good robusto that we smoke blended. anything. I smoke and, anything, and it's great in the morning. It's quick. Right after with a good espresso or a cappuccino, and then I go to the factory, and then I'll start sampling my blends and stuff like that. But the, the Robusta is a great short cigar. So I think uh, the size of the cigar depends on what part of day it is, 
what you're eating, mm-hmm. where you're at. It's 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 all about that. It's not just one the specific company. And, there's like, and they got yeah. some, like, I've been to some of these events where they have some of the smaller cigars. And, I, and I'll, I'll enjoy the smaller cigars, too. Like, especially. 47 gauge. Well, I'll bring some. You have, like, these petite Churchills, right? They're like mm-hmm. a like a 4 by 48 little tiny cigar. Mm-hmm. And I'll bring some of whenever I go to somebody's house. Corona, petite Corona. And, you know, we're having some people over because, especially in the winter, right? You, they go to somebody's house. You know, and I don't time. know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Do you have an area that's heated? Do you have a fireplace? Right. You don't. If you don't, and I want to go out and smoke, I don't want to sit out there for an hour and a half with a no. six by six. You see, have these little ones, but they're also good for. We actually, I've been to some events where you'll have a cigar and whiskey pairing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And they'll say, okay, we're gonna have, we'll have three different cigars and three different whiskeys, but you don't want to smoke a six by sixty three no. times. No, so you have this no, little no, no, four no. by forty eight. Smoke this with this whiskey. And then another four by forty eight with this whiskey, and then this way you have you can smoke Correct. through it, enjoy the whiskey, and then go on to the next one and not have to smoke three. Yeah, full we cigars. just did that in Patchogue at Chops Steakhouse, Chops Steakhouse. great yes. establishment, excellent. The the the, every, the place was phenomenal, and we did the same thing. We had a mixologist. We were trying different bourbons with different pairings, the foods and everything. Just putting out food, bourbon, outside cigar, back in that kind of. We rotated. Yeah. It was a success. So, what great. would you say is your favorite? We'll go through. What is your favorite? Cigar and drink pairing. Mm. Mixed drink or straight up? Doesn't matter. It could be alcohol, not uh, non-alcohol, whatever it is. What's your favorite cigar pairing? Like what's your like, go-to drink? Yeah. Well, I like... I actually like a bullet bourbon, believe it or not. Okay. Bourbon and cigars. I like, I, yeah. I like, I like bullet bourbon and okay. all the booster. And I think a lot it's about education, too. Because the way I look at it is like this. Any, I'm sure you guys like to gamble, right? Believe it or not, ah, no, I do not. Him, come on, very much yep. so. come on. Let's yeah. let's open this up. All right. So, so you go. <laughs> let's say you go to the casino. You go over to the craps table, right? Oh, I, play, I like blackjack. You're talking I, my language. I'm, I'm a black. These are all my buzzwords. All right. <laughs> so so go, I'm going from six to midnight here. So Keep you going. okay? So you go to the craps table. <laughs> to me, and I and I've been gambling a while. The craps table is sort of like. A, it's a little bit intimidating, right? Everyone's screaming, waving their hands, I O, hard six, <laughs> this and that. And in order to learn the game, you kind of have, someone's got to teach you, right? Yeah. And when it comes to cigars, you could walk into a humidor and, and you're looking around and there's a lot of new people, right? It's a 20, it's over a $20 billion industry, right? So there's always newcomers smoking cigars and they walk into a humidor and they're just kind of overwhelmed, right? They, they don't know the difference between a Maduro and a Connecticut, you know, or a Robusto and a Gordo. Mm. You know, they don't know the sizes. So it comes a lot, whoever's in that lounge or cigar shop, to, to guide people, you know. Most and, and for us... And the, re- a, and the rest of the people that are... And the saying, people not are just the people working there, but the people that are... Exactly. Yeah. And for us, that's big because when we're selling our cigar to these cigar shops, right, it's one thing to be able to get your cigar into a shop. It's another thing for it then to sell. Right? Yeah, so yeah. you need someone it's there like an ambassador. That's a good point. Like it's a, a very good point. Let me, let me ask you guys this. Do you guys find the New York cigar market a lot different than a lot of yeah. the 100%. other? 100%. Because yes. a lot of boutique cigar companies that we talk to don't really like to sell to shops. And I mean, us kind of we kind of feel the same way. I mean, we appreciate all our New York uh, supporters. But a lot of people... At least in a New York era, say, you know, the boutique cigar scene for New York is tough. And I'm going to tell you why. You send, them, you send them a lot of cigars, you know, yeah. we have callbacks. Creatures of habit. So people are stuck on the majors. You know, you want to stick with that. The Padrones, the, the La Flores, the yeah. Fuentes, yeah. They're, the Davidoffs. Those, those are the big loyal. names in the industry, and they make great cigars, the bottom line. You know, they've been around 100 years, these companies. They perfected, especially Fuente. He's got his own grower, shade grown. Well, I just saw that Fuente and Padron. They're selling their yes. collaboration box for like eight thousand dollars. Yeah, well, you know, that's for a why not? Time. You know, why? Because there's going to be cool. some some guy that, release. Yeah. I saw yeah, that's that. Crazy. 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 But don't get it wrong. Boutique cigars like us, we put a lot of work into what we do in the blending. And my workers, my rollers in Dominican Republic, they're second, third generation. So this is not just guys that just started yesterday. Yeah. These guys, these most of these rolls, we got. Guys in our factory, 24, 25, they were sitting on their grandfather's laps, you know, rolling cigars, watching it. So this is second, third generation Dominican Republic. We have a lot of history there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, and a lot of these guys came from Cuba, which is where it all originated from. You know, Cuba's yeah. the OGs and all of these companies, even like 
Fuente. They were Cubans. They came in and they went to other countries and it didn't work out. Whatever issue, then they all they all migrated to the Dominican Republic and they and, and they hung their hat and they settled there because you know the country's stable, which you guys know. I mean, you guys are there too as well. So Dominican Republic is a stable country. The government's stable. They support cigar. We have corporations. Yeah, it's probably it's, one of the. It's probably one of, or if not the biggest export. Hundred percent. We're the closest thing, I would say. I mean, again, it's a, it's a, it's it's, a, it's an argument, a topic of conversation. But Dominican Republic, everything's the closest thing to Cuba when it comes to Cuban. If you compare a Cuban cigar to a Dominican cigar, it's very, very close. Mm, yeah. The soil, especially the region we're in, in Santiago, and that, that region is where we grow. And Navarrete is where our, our plantation is. The uh, the the soil and the um, oh, sorry. we're gonna uh, we're okay. gonna get a little uh, yeah. refill here. For sure. I'll uh, do another old fashioned. So we want to we'll take this time here. really to shout out the general club, by the way. Yeah. Uh, we and have Andrea. Shout the out to Andrea. Andrea. Oh, come, on. come over here. Hi, everyone. We have the wonderful yeah, Andrea She's right the here. The best waitress in the general club. Thank you. So shout out to the general club for having us. Bikini yeah. model in the okay. making or bikini yeah. model uh, connoisseur. Was it bikini or, or bikini. bodybuilding or? Yeah, bikini show. Bikini show, yeah. okay. She's yeah. a future. Um, she's a future employee of the uh, San Giuseppe. There you go. Yeah. Right? And, future and, cigar. And girl. for people who don't know, the General is the only place you could eat, drink, and smoke inside. Yes, like, in this New York. place is unbelievable. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. the best. Well, in the air, there well, is in, there is in this so, area. Yeah, there in this area, because there's a, there's a place across that maybe we can all go to at one point. But there's a place across the river at um, in Inglewood, New Jersey, called Sophia's. Oh yeah, heard, I mean, we were there. There. that we is were there. a that is we a restaurant. There. Nice cool spot. We were there. Beautiful restaurant. Well, and then if you say, "Hey, listen, I have a reservation in the Cigar Lounge," they take you downstairs. Yeah, we've, been yeah. we've been there. Yeah, it's, it's a good nice spot, place. right? Yep. But I would love, uh, Andre. Can I yeah. grab another? Um, oh, perfect. You're the best. Um, but yeah, I, I I like spots like that because you know, being cigar guys, there's nothing better than sitting down and being able to. Have a nice meal, <laughs> a glass of wine, right. and smoke a cigar. Great for networking. It's, too, uh, it's just yeah. such a wonderful yeah. feeling to be yeah. able to do yeah. that. And there's not a lot of places. This not is the only. I think this might be the only place on the and, island. And it is that, like this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because there might be some places that right, are speakeasies in Manhattan. Sold but out here, the memberships like they're not even taking them. I, I believe. I think I believe. so. But this place used to be the old Havana Club, Eisenhower Park. And it was a nice establishment, but they, the new owners took it over, and they really mm. they went all out. Great and place. they love it. Oh, it's fantastic! I actually went yeah. the first time we the first time we came here, my wife and I. Uh, they brought us up, and they were showing us the cigar lounge, and I was like, you know what? It's like this is only like twenty minutes from my house. I might have to. Uh, I say, like, hey, Nigo, how much is the uh, membership? He's like, oh, it's you know X, Y, and Z. I said, that's it. I was expecting you know yeah membership. Yeah, right. I was expecting yeah, yeah. you know membership like a country club. Where you know twenty, thirty, forty thousand oh, dollars for me. He goes, no, it's, no, I'm like, yeah, it's very reasonable. <laughs> uh, I looked phenomenal. at my wife. I go, oh, um, the food, the food is, <laughs> the food is yeah. Yeah. You're so, not gonna get food like that. So let's okay. So you said bourbon and cigar. So you like whiskey and cigar pairings. I'm a, I love Johnny Walker Blue. It's my go-to. Okay, Scotch, Scotch. I like a I like a Johnny Walker Blue or a McAllen. 18 is good. 21. It's a big scotch. Yeah, but you're drinking. But I'm drinking an old fashioned. Yeah. It just depends on my mood. I'll do a bullet old fashioned. It's a little sweet. It just depends on my night. Depends on what my dinner is going to be. Or That's a very good point. Depends because on what you're I eating. think that um, just like what you drink, what you eat determines what you drink, right? Like, mm -hmm. obviously, if, if you're a big wine drinker, I love wine, okay? If you're going to have some sort of fish or a chicken, you probably don't want to have. Like a Brunello or no. a Merlot, sure. anything like that. It's way too strong. Too you want to have yeah. something like me. Right. You could go with like a Pinot Noir if you want to stick with red, or you might go with white. If you're having a steak, you want something heavy. Cabernet, Cabernet yeah. you know. You could do Brunello de Montalcino, which is my personal favorite. Or you go with like a, a Malbec. Same thing with cigars, right? Depends on what are you eating. Are you going with a steak? Maybe go with a full-bodied smoke. Are you yeah. going with chicken? Go with a mild smoke, right? And I think that a lot of people don't realize... That cigars are just like the like alcohol or just Same like thing. wine. Same thing. Determine what you're eating. Is it what time of day is it? Is it in the morning? You having a cup of coffee? Maybe you don't want a full bodied Nicaraguan puro that's gonna knock you on your ass because it's six o'clock in the morning. You know? You're not gonna go on ninety degree weather, go to the beach and order a, a whiskey. Like, yeah, exactly, exactly. No. exactly. No. exactly. No. I'm not yeah. sitting you in a hundred like Maybe exactly. a vodka or a gin and tonic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same thing. And that's the beautiful thing about cigars, is there's yeah. so much variety. You had said that Baskin Robbins got thirty one flavors. There's so much 
variety Listen, of cigars. Vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Everybody likes something different. Try something That's else. It. So you're not going to make everybody happy. We see that. But we try to shoot for 100%. And I think the key is to try to make something for everybody, right? Yeah. So you make a medium, full-body cigar. Like Joe's cigar is going to be more on the full-body because it's a yeah. San Andres wrapper. Is that released yet? It's coming out soon. We coming just, out soon. Coming out it's soon. actually yeah. aging right do now. We, as we, can, we say, can you say the name? Do we know the name yet? Yeah, it's going to be the San Giuseppe it's, Big it's, Joe Gambino yeah. cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Black, 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 is the label right? going to be picture your face like a... No. no we'll, get a, we'll send you. We have uh, I want to try prototypes. it. I'm very, very we have the interested. Prototype. I think you said it's a black label, right? Very interesting. Black label. Black label. Is there any gold on it? Yes. I was going to say, it's got to be gold. It is the actual crest of San Giuseppe, but the second band has his. Okay. There you go. Oh, so it's got a second band like this? Correct. Everything has oh, a second okay. band. So let me ask it's you this, Joe. Joe. So you're going to be on season three of Gravesend, right? They yeah. smoke a lot of cigars do. In, in, do. in that show. You know, we did have William DeMeo, so yeah, shout we out to William DeMeo. We were trying to finagle our way into the next season. You he, might see us on set. He's like, hey, when I'm shooting, come on set. He's, uh, he's hard to get information out of. Right? <laughs> I was watching the whole thing. I'm like, he didn't say nothing. He didn't about, he didn't about season three. That's how he is, though. I thought it was like, listen. So are you going to try maybe, you know, one, one of your scenes you cut, you got one of the big Joe Gambino cigars. Of course. Of course. In fact, I'm going to have a Joe Gambino cigar everything I do. You know what? Why not? It's, it's, on him. That's yeah. so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to ask you about your cigar pairing. But before I do that, it's very interesting when you, when you, it's almost like a blessing and a curse when you come out with your own line. Okay, so you met before you came out with your own line, you as well, but and us as well. You smoke everything, right? You just you you try and all these different cigars, and you just you're not you're you're not partial to. You, I mean, you have a few favorites, but you just try everything. When you come out with your own cigar. It's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because, all right, now I have my own cigar. Like, this is this is yeah. awesome. This is something that I've dreamed of. It started in your brain. It came out to fruition. And, and you can see it. You can touch it. And it's beautiful. But do I have to smoke But now all you do is smoke <laughs> your cigar. Like, yeah. that's it. I, I do it all the time. It's all I want to yeah. smoke. It's hard for me. I get cigars <laughs> given to me all the time. And you don't want to smoke? I mean, smoke I got it. thousands of San Giuseppe's like on my this. blends because I have to try my own blends. I don't right. have time to right. smoke. You got it. And also, like, us being... It very heavily involved in the social media world. I don't want to. We're a walking billboard. Like, yeah, got, we're a walking you gotta, billboard. Right? Always got to be like, like I said, we get cigars all the time. But like, I don't want to be out in public smoking up a drone because it might not jump up a conversation oh, with somebody course, where I can say, gotta, "Hey, I got my gotta, own cigar. Try." You got to promote right. your own brand. So it's like, like a yeah, drone. It's like, oh, you have your own cigar, but you're smoking up a drone. Great cigars. Don't get me wrong. But drones, that's the thing. That's it. They're they're. Awesome, they're awesome cigars. They're, I love Padron. 100%. I love Opus Sex and the There's Fuente. A lot of line. great cigars out there. I love I really Oliva. Don't. Oliva's a great oh, brand. Me too. I okay, like Oliva a lot. I like a lot of. There's like Tatuaje and La Flor Dominicana. Yeah. La Flor's right around there. Davidoff, right Caldwell cigars. I mean, the list goes on, right? Avo's a great brand. Yeah. My father's got My a lot. Great there's, brand. there's so many good brands out there, but when I'm posting on social media, I don't want to. I'm like, I want to. Post my brand, of course you, you know. know. Yeah, so it's kind of like it kind of taints you. Yeah. But this company is all about branding, and let me—it's all about marketing. And when you're branding. a boutique brand, you have to have to market about. your mm-hmm. brand. But you know, we had talked about this before we even started. Is that the beautiful thing is, like right now, we have our own brand, but we're smoking your cigar, right? right? And then we're talking maybe about your cigar, after, and you gave me your oh, cigar, yeah, and, and I'm so going to smoke that later. Cam- <laughs> you best believe it, after the cameras turn off, we'll smoke our cigar, right? Maybe we get some dinner or something. We smoke our cigar. That's the beautiful thing about cigars is that everybody's trying to help the other person. Yes. I talked. To, I told we you were that talking about that before. It's yeah. not like McDonald's is going to have a podcast and then try to promote Wendy's and say, "Wendy's, come on our show. We want to talk about your freaking hamburger." It's a big Dave's business, double. but everybody everybody supports each other. That's we were at the PCA the last year. It's it's and they might be yeah. the only industry yeah. that does that. You're not competitive. Yeah. Like my, a good friend of mine, Bob Russo, he owns a restaurant in East Meadow. Okay, it's called Garden Social. He has a big following himself, but he's constantly promoting other restaurants and people always say to him, why would you do that? You have your own restaurant. He says, you know what? Because it's nice to help other people. When you help other people, it comes back to you. Mm-hmm. Full and, circle. And that's what it's very, all about. Very, very successful. That's what it's so, all about. You know? All right? Yeah. I mean, you know, like I said, you're never going to make everybody happy. But if you try, if you like what you like and you put it out there and you do a, a sample, like, you know, I, like, I test my cigars. I bring them back all the time. I put no labels on them. I give them to my father. He's the best tester. And he'll call me up, my father, three days. Yeah, Joey, I liked it, but, you well, know, he'll Actually, say, he calls me. He goes, he calls Jason, him. why is Joseph giving me this garbage? 
He won't give me San Giuseppe. <laughs> <laughs> I give him all but the other what? stuff. That, that's oh, actually a little like, I yeah. do the same thing. With all it's it's funny because I, I, <laughs> I, I, I our group of time friends, time. right? Like we're really the the two you know big cigar smokers, and and my wife starts smoking cigars, so she enjoys them a lot. And I'll I'll say, hey, honey, we got we're coming out. We're thinking about this one. Try this. But we have a, a group of friends, and they'll all come over. We'll have them. We'll hang out in the pool. We'll have some food. Have a, a fire or whatever. And uh, a few of my friends didn't. When before we started really hanging out, they didn't really smoke cigars. And then now, like you said, hey, just try this one. Try this one. Try this one. Next thing you know, yeah, I got like it's almost you know, like we smoke, and then like yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like I have a gateway drug. Another another yeah, buddy of ours smokes cigars. Next thing you know, the next guy smokes cigars. Yeah, and the next guy smokes cigars. The next. So now it's like they're all into cigars. They all have humidors, and we come out with. So I'm like, hey, try this one. They're like, yeah, you but know you what? guys, you guys are young. Right? You're in your thirties. You see more and more now the new generation smoking. Yeah. Kids in their twenties, I'm getting into cigars. I'd rather them smoke a cigar than inhale cigarettes in those vapes all day because that's going to affect your life. Well, we, I, we do a cigar that. events. We see we see a lot of younger guys more our mm-hmm. age in their twenties. I'm time. like, yeah, come, please come. You know, more about we like having older guys, but the younger just, guys are just as good. We've talked on the show. We've actually did an episode where we we printed out a number of studies. There was like five, six, seven studies. From all di- all across the board, different groups and different organizations. Excuse me, and um, and we we showed the the health risks or oh I saw in, it. in yeah, our in our yeah. case yeah. There, we went through it's okay what actually are the health oh, risks of smoking of smoking thank cigars you. comparison what are thank you very much Andrea what what shout are out shout out the, to Andrea <laughs> like the health risks if any and it was compared with you know cigarette smokers it was compared with People that just smoke cigarettes, people that just smoke cigars, people that started with cigarettes, went to cigars, went from cigarettes, uh, cigars to cigarettes, went, and we went through everything. And cigars have no effect. On you. The so only they said the only time that it has a slight effect more than two is three, when you're smoking three. like ten a day. Yeah, well, you're ten keeping your mouth yeah. right. Ten but hours if you, a day, but then you so we and going. we and this is not just one study. This was multiple studies across yeah. like. But hundreds they, of thousands of people. Press, you got to really look for oh, that. And we, and we, we, we live in a fake news, uh, you know, yeah, society. Because we said, you know what? We're a cigar pocket. Let's bring the facts. And we got all these studies together. And cigars, if you're if you're an occasional, they said if you're an occasional cigar smoker, right? Like once a week, it's it's literally. It we would get a lot of slack. We, made, went, we made a lot of clips. We, then then we said, made a lot of clips and they're like, no, this is bullshit. Oh, oh, blah, blah. And I said, no, read this article. Here you go. Is the episode still up or is it frozen somehow? Oh, it's up. It's up. Yeah, yeah. Keep posting it, right? And we didn't believe it or not, YouTube takes down episodes that have really nothing to do with cigars and they'll remove those episodes, but those ones they keep. Mm -hmm. Then it went into another, it said, okay, what about one a day? It said, still, it has no effect. And they said, what about like two a day? Well ventilated area. Five a day. And once you got to like six, seven a day, then it's like, okay, now it's, it might. Of course, yeah, you're breathing in, you know. And and I go, why is this being suppressed? Like there, this is tobacco. Because you get a lot of haters. No chemicals. <laughs> no, nothing. Well, give, give him a. We had a. Uh, we had the guy Josh Abersky. He is the oh, the, yeah. the head of government relations for the, the Premium PCA. Cigar Association, yeah. and he told the uh, you know you're the numbers guy, so you, you know clearly, yeah. so you can remember the number. You tell him the number. So, I can't remember the number. So but. he had said that, uh, what what the the FDA likes to do, is they rope anything that is smoke related. They rope it all into one category. Mm-hmm. Okay, and they said that. If you look at all of the tobacco sales in America, okay, what they consider cigarettes. tobacco, cigarettes, um, Vapes? not non-premium cigars, okay, they called like e e machine made cigars, but they had right. cigarettes, yeah. they had non-premium meaning Swisher Sweets, Backwoods, yeah, Alcohol, machine rolls, okay, machine right. roll. White Owls, then they had premium cigars, which is what we smoke, right. the premium category. cigars, okay, yep. they said. Hand, hand rolled premium cigars only account for less than half a percent yes. of all tobacco sales in America. <laughs> wow. So, what the FDA considers tobacco, cigarettes, non premium, and premium, the premium version only accounts for half a percent. Right. And he goes, so why are they coming after us? Like we're ju- like we're cigarettes. He goes, we're not. You know, it's they don't have the knowledge. Half that's, a that's percent. It. Well, I mean, the courts right better. now they're going back and forth. I'm sure you're up to date well, with with, uh, with Judge Meadow over there. The FDA said, you know, cigars are X. You know, they they should be they should be. I forgot what they deemed them. They deemed them just as bad as cigarettes. And the judge actually favored cigars and said no. Clearly, they gave you a lot of evidence to prove right. that they're not the same as cigarettes. 
Go back and reassess your. He probably report. smokes. Yeah. He probably definitely smoked. <laughs> probably goes, so, yeah. After he left there, he went to the cigar yeah, lounge yeah, and lit yeah. one up. <laughs> because we all understand what it is. At the end of the day, we enjoy a cigar and a drink or scotch or even sitting in our backyard and light one up and commiserating with your relative or friend. That's what it's all about. And it's about enjoying something, and actually, it lowers your blood pressure because now you're yes. detoxing. You're, yes. you know, people are stressed out. Think about it, right? We all have high pressure jobs. We all want to pay our mortgage and bills, and we all want to get to the top. It's stressful. So, what does that do to your body? Stress by smoking a cigar and having a cocktail, it actually relieves that stress. So, it's actually healthy. You, you are one hundred percent right. We did another episode talking about that. They said, what are some of like, you know, how does cigar, how are cigars good for your health? And we had talked about the number one killer in the United States stress. is stress. 100%. And they said in, it's indirectly related to, you know, heart disease and stroke because you have high blood pressure or you have you're, you're stressed out all the time. And what do cigars do? They release really, stress. Yeah. So if you can stress find it's cortisol. just like, you know, going mm. to the gym or meditating, what does it do? It relieves stress. Well, cortisol so is, if I can take your an blood hour pressure. out of my day oh, yeah. no, okay. to sit back, have a nice cocktail and a cigar and just unwind, it right. reduces the stress levels. It's like exercise. Ooh.